Good afternoon, students, um, and welcome to our first official video of the school year that has to do with math. Um, so in this video, we are going to be talking about the real number system. Please make sure that you update your table of contents with this title, as well as whatever page in your notebook you are working on. Um, and you may be thinking, real number system, does that mean there are imaginary numbers? And the answer to that question is yes, there are. Uh, if you get so fortunate, we will talk about what imaginary numbers are um, at the end of the school year. And if we don't talk about it this year, you will be learning them um, very soon in your algebra level classes. So something for this particular set of notes is we are actually going to use something called a graphic organizer. It looks like this. Now, if you did not get this in class, um, you can still take the notes today. I would just, however, take a moment to pause the video and copy down this graphic in your notebook. You're probably gonna have to turn your notebook to the landscape uh, orientation. So if you do have this uh, graphic, there's no need for you to really pause the video because you already have it. But if you do not and um, you need to get the notes down today, please make sure that you copy something that looks similar to this in your notebook now. OK, so today we're going to talk about the real number system. And what that means is we are going to be talking about the kinds of numbers we are going to be using throughout the entire school year, okay? Now, I am going to use two different colors today while we take notes. I chose dark blue and light blue. Um, if you have another color aside from whatever like your main pen or pencil is that you're using, um, you may wanna use that. We're gonna use um, one of the colors to denote whether numbers are positive or negative. Um, and the other color we're gonna use to mainly just talk about the definitions. Um, so let's talk about the kinds of numbers that we are going to be working with. So the main kind of number, or not necessarily the main kind of number, one of the most basic forms of numbers is a number called a counting number or a natural number, okay? And these are all the numbers that we learn, you know, when we're little. So all of our numbers, like starting off counting at one, and then we go to two, and then we go to three, and then we go to four, and then we go to five, and so forth. Okay, so the counting numbers are the natural numbers are any number that we can count to and we start counting with the number one. It's very rare that we start counting with the number zero. So this is all of our numbers, any number that we can count to. So it starts at one and it goes on and on and on. You'll notice that we count with whole values, right? There's no fractions or decimals involved in this. And you'll also notice since we're starting at one, all of the numbers that uh, are classified as a natural or a counting number are going to be positive. So I'm just gonna put a little plus sign to mean positive with a circle around it in the corner. So you remember all of the counting numbers are positive, okay? So those are our most basic form of numbers. But then we're gonna level up to another kind of number, a number you are very familiar with, okay? So we're gonna level up to numbers that are called whole numbers. So the whole numbers are all of the counting numbers, all of the counting numbers, but it includes another number. And we're also going to include zero in this particular set of numbers. So all of the counting numbers and zero. So you can think about them as like zero, one, two, three, and so forth. OK, zero is classified as a whole number because whole numbers, you can think about them as quantities. Right. So I can say I have zero dollars. That would be pretty sad considering I'm almost 30 years old. But and it's not true. I have more than zero dollars. Not much more, but more. Um, but the whole numbers are all of the counting numbers and zero. We include zero as a whole number. OK, so you'll notice again all of these numbers are positive. So I'm gonna put another plus sign up here in the corner with a circle around it so we can denote that it is positive. And I'm using the light blue color, it's not showing that well on the camera, to do the positive signs and a different color to do the definitions. Again, it's not showing well on camera, but I just wanted you to know, okay? After whole numbers, we're gonna level up again to another kind of number. Some of you may be familiar with these numbers already, some of you sixth grade or whatever grade we're in, um, I think most of you guys will be sixth graders if you're watching this video. Um, <clears throat> we are gonna start talking about integers and we're actually gonna utilize integers this year. So integers are positive and negative, positive and negative, 
whole values. Okay. So not only are we going to have all of our positive whole values, like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we're going to have their negative counterparts as well. So like negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, and so forth. Okay. So when we talk about the signs that these numbers are, they can be positive or they can be negative. Integers are positive and negative whole values. Again, you do not see any fractions or decimals within this classification of number. They are whole values. However, it could be a negative whole value, such as negative two. Okay. All right. And then the highest level a number can be in the real number system is what's called a rational number. So a rational number is any number that can be written as a simple as a simple fraction i didn't leave much space between a and simple so it's a simple <laughs> but is as a simple fraction okay um so for example numbers like one half three fourths um, the negative versions of these numbers too. So like negative one half. Um, it could be an improper fraction like 10 over two, 11 over three. Um, those are all rational numbers. Um, our integers and our whole numbers are also rational numbers because we can take any of those numbers and if we put it over one, um, it's still classified as a rational number. So for example, like three over one, which is the same thing as three, is a rational number as well, because we can write it as a simple fraction. A simple fraction is when the numerator and denominator are whole values, okay? Um, we have fractions in this mix, but we also have decimals. So there are two kinds of decimals that can be written as a simple fraction. Um, and we're gonna talk about those two decimals now. So before we do that, I do want you to note that um, rational numbers can be positive or negative. Um, I am gonna write that up here in this section because there's a little bit more space. So I'm gonna put a plus sign and a minus sign up here, okay? Rational numbers can be positive or negative. And there are two types of decimals that when we convert them to a fraction, they simplify to a simple fraction where the numerator and denominator are whole values. So the two kinds of decimals are, we're gonna just draw two arrows here. The first one is called a terminating decimal. So terminate, or you could put terminating. So a terminating decimal is a decimal that ends. So for example, like 0 0.45, that's a terminating decimal. It ends in the hundreds place. If I had a decimal like 0 0.5234, that's a decimal that ends. It ends in the 10 thousandths place. So a terminating decimal is a decimal that ends, and we can rewrite these as fractions. Some of you may already know how to do that. If you don't, we're going to get to it later this school year, okay? The next kind of decimal that can be written as a rational number is what's called a repeating decimal. So a repeating, a repeating decimal. So a repeating decimal looks something like this. Let's say I have 0 0.121212, and that pattern goes on and on and on. So a lot of times repeating decimals, they're gonna have some sort of pattern. It could be the same number over and over again, like 0 0.33333, or it could be a sequence of repeating numbers, like 1212121245, 145, 145, and et cetera. They will always have a dot, 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 or a eclipse, no. Ellipse, I'm gonna to have to look up the grammar term for the dot, dot, dot. If you know it, go ahead and comment it down below. Um, but they'll typically have the dot, dot, dot as part of the decimal. These decimals can be rewritten as simple fractions. Um, and again, we will go over this later in the school year, how we convert decimals into fractions. But if it is a terminating or repeating decimal or any sort of simple fraction, including integers and whole numbers that can be rewritten as something over one, it is classified as a rational number, okay? So you'll notice counting numbers are classified as whole numbers. Whole numbers are classified as integers and integers are classified as rational numbers. And then there's all these other things like our decimals and the other kinds of fractions that didn't fit into these other classifications. That's where they fit here up in the rational number section. But you'll notice it doesn't go the other way around. R not all rational numbers are integers. For example, one half 
cannot be an integer because it's not a positive or negative whole value. It's a fraction, okay? So this section here, the counting numbers up through the rational numbers are going to be the main numbers that we are working with. However, there's gonna be some instances where we work with a different kind of number. It's still classified as a real number. So it's in this real system. It's called an irrational number. So an irrational number is the opposite of rational, okay? So if rational numbers are any number that can be written as a simple fraction, Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as a simple fraction. So numbers that cannot be written as a simple fraction. Okay, so here are some examples. Um, in geometry, we're gonna talk about a symbol and a number called pi, which is the number 3.14159, and the decimal goes on and on and on. Um, however, unlike the decimals that we talked about, it does not terminate and it does not have a repeating pattern, okay? So it is a non-repeating and non terminating decimal. So if we have a decimal that does not repeat and does not terminate, it is classified now as an irrational number because it's very, very hard to put this particular number or any number that is in the situation into a simple fraction. We can round to a terminating decimal and then make it into a simple fraction. But if it goes on and on and on forever and there is no pattern to it whatsoever, it is classified as an irrational number. And pi, which we're gonna use when we talk about circles is a classic example of an irrational number. So it is important that you understand the difference between all of these numbers. It's also important to remember that everything in one classification doesn't mean that it fits into a different category. So I use the example of one half, for instance. I could also use the example of zero, right? Zero can be classified as a whole number, an integer, and a rational number, but it's not classified as classified as a counting number, okay? So what I would like for you to do now that you are done with this graphic organizer is we are gonna put it in our notebook and I'm actually gonna show you how I suggest you tape it. Um, so on your notebook, um, underneath the title, I would take your graphic organizer and maybe kind of line it up to where the margin is. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold this paper in half like so, okay? And then keep holding it in place. But what you're gonna do is I would tape it, I would tape it along this top edge right here and on the side and maybe even on the bottom. So that way when it's taped, you can just open it up. And then when you close your notebook, you can fold it up so it's not like hanging out of your notebook, okay? So I have a piece of tape here so I can kind of model it for you. So we're gonna tape. We're gonna tape the top underneath the title. And then I'm gonna tape down at the bottom. And then I would take a piece of tape. So three pieces of tape total. Now I'm gonna tape it over here on the side. So now it's attached and I can fold it at that crease and then I can close my notebook and it fits in my notebook. So that is the real number system. Um, again, if this was your first time watching, make sure you go you know, rewatch this video again so you can get all the notes down. If this was your second time watching, uh, get ready to pause the video for your practice questions. So you have four practice questions today. I will read them for you uh, so you can make sure that, um, if you can't read my handwriting. So the first question is, please give three example, examples of an integer. The second question is, please classify 10 over two. Make sure you include all the classifications. So if it classifies as like a whole number and an integer, make sure you write both of those down. Uh, question number three, true or false? All integers are rational numbers, true or false? And number four is, explain what a terminating and repeating decimal is, and please make sure you provide an example of each of those, okay? Don't don't forget if you have any other questions to put them into your need to ask section so we can talk about them in class. I hope everybody has a good afternoon or a good evening if you're watching this at night and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.